This truly was a dark age in European history and is nothing to be celebrated lightly, make no mistake. Gone was Rome and along with her went civilization for another half millennium. Vast populations across Europe, forced from their homes by disease, great hordes from the east and tribes from Scandinavia would pay little attention to a concept such as borders. It's small wonder the period is known as one of the darkest in history. Crayford and Kent as a whole was not spared this turmoil and it would come in the form of an invasion against Romano-British life itself. Feiston Dyke is thought to have held the line between modern-day Joydens Wood and the River Thames to the north. The intention here was that anyone hoping to invade London from Kent would have to overcome the dyke first. However, it could also be contested that the dike was instead used to defend a large military encampment or area of importance to the south, possibly constructed by a wintering army or large foraging force. Whatever the case, near the centre of the dike, we find the small village of Crackenford modern day Crayford. Zooming into ground level reveals a settlement stuck between two cultures, that of the Roman civilization and of the local Britain population. Of particular note in this area is the River Cray, which could provide defense, power and sustenance to the villagers. It is likely that Watling Street, a Roman legion road which bisects Crayford, the Cray and the dike itself, would have required some form of defensive outpost and grain supply at this point, with the dike and the nearby Mount Nod also providing some measure of strategic defence. Agriculture would have been the primary livelihood of the area with large amounts of people involved in the constant plough, sow and harvest cycle involved in such a way of life. It is also important to note that while a minor settlement even at the time, the presence of such an important artery road likely necessitated the permanent deployment of at least a minimal garrison force in the area, first by the Romans, then by the Britons who succeeded them. This lends weight to the idea that a lot of men fighting at the Battle of Crackenford were likely recruited locally as volunteers. The battle Hengist so heavily pressed probably happened here, at the western side of the River Cray between Mount Nod and the heart of the village. the site of St Paulina's church would likely have supported the defending Britain force. Just up the road, 
we find a series of Anglo-Saxon cemeteries. It's likely these were mostly borderless, with little in the way of individual grave markings. Burial mounds of varying size and character would have broken the otherwise flat piece of land. It is likely the area was still in use during our period, possibly even by Hengist himself. This may have been the final resting place for both civilians and soldiers alike, and small mortuary houses of timber or stone would likely have stood alongside chalk grave covers, symbolizing perhaps the elevated societal position of their deceased inhabitants. A funeral pyre probably stood in a central position, overlooked perhaps by a tree or grove of importance to the cemetery itself. There are suggestions that such a site could have dual purposed as pasture or grazing land, or that perhaps a ditch surrounded the area as a pseudo boundary of sorts though this remains mostly theory and largely open to discussion. A little further south of present-day Dartford, the small parish of Darenth holds secrets of its own. A magnificent Roman villa likely built by a family of wealthy industrialists between the 1st and 3rd centuries, would have punctuated this otherwise natural landscape. The main complex itself, around the size of Buckingham Palace, would have been a sight to behold even for the modern spectator. Massive gardens flank a once beautiful shrine and monument. Behind and to either side sits the main villa building, with what is thought to have been a fullery or fulonica. It's not a long shot to believe the locals would have occupied the Roman villa and surrounding structures. Indeed, the remains of a campfire have been found in one of the stately rooms, and a Germanic bowl was recently discovered nearby, which may help support this theory. Despite its decrepit appearance by our point in history, there's no doubt this would have represented the peak of Roman opulence in the nearby area. The Darenth Villa is a surprisingly complete piece of evidence for what was once full Roman integration in the area. This is the type of landscape 
that Hengist and Horsa would have found on their travels through Kent. <laughs>